Can you refill a butane cartridge with LPG or propane? Part 2. This video is for scientific and educational purposes. This is not a how-to guide. Do not try this at home. Hello and welcome to another video. This time we have a part 2 to my popular Can you refill a butane cartridge with LPG or propane video. In the previous video I purchased a butane cartridge refill adapter from AliExpress, then basically documented my attempt at getting it to work. The purpose of this second video is to tie up a few loose ends and answer some questions, which there were many. You know how YouTube comment sections are. Plenty of experts, some positive comments, some helpful, some annoying. I had a few thoughts myself. Hopefully I'll cover enough today to not warrant a part 3. Before we do anything on this video, I want to go over a few facts and make some things clear. It's dangerous overfilling or misusing a disposable gas canister. It's not something people should be doing outside the realm of science or a survival situation. End of story. This video is a continuation of my previous science experiment. In the last video I did not recommend anyone try this, the same goes with this video. Everything from the gas I use, canister size or weight and the camping stoves I use may be different to what you have. For example I have two Campmaster camping stoves which have a different mechanism. So what may work or work safely for me might not work for you and vice versa. More than half of the world's LPG is extracted from natural gas, the rest is processed from crude oil in petrochemical factories. We call it LPG in Australia, in your country it might be called propane. Depending on where you live it may or may not be 100% propane. Something to keep in mind for fellow backyard scientists. A shout out to Wikipedia for the misinformation in my previous video. LPG is not 48% propane, 50% butane and 2% pentane. Wikipedia have corrected this in their recent page. If you haven't been fooled by Wikipedia before, you haven't tried hard enough. I found a recent blog post from Australian gas supplier Algas, which is a wealth of information I did not have in my previous video. I highly recommend you check it out if you have any questions about what blend of LPG you have. For example, I found that in Australia we call it LPG, but it's 100% propane. The same for Ireland, the UK and the USA. Other countries on the chart have a blend of propane and butane. Before we move on, we'll quickly talk about propane versus butane and gas pressure. On this chart you can see propane is 858 kilopascals at 21 degrees Celsius, which is four times the pressure of butane. Add to that another 400 kilopascals on a hot day of 40 degrees Celsius, which we have every summer here in Australia, and you've got bigger problems. Links to these and other documents will be in the video description. We'll leave it there with the science and get on with the video. First up, let's test what will happen with the LPG bottle in the upright position. I didn't mention this in the previous video, I just assumed it worked better upside down. You may have spotted the bright orange knob went missing. Light was fading so I just went ahead with the video. It's difficult to turn. Later you'll see why it was a bad idea. Just a faint hiss of gas going into the empty canister. very light, it definitely hasn't filled. I tested it on another can with the same result. Both of their weights were about 110 grams, which is near empty. Let's flip the bottle over. 
Again, this base is very unstable. I'll just turn the fitting around so I can access the gas tap. I weighed the empty can. 100. As the gas starts filling, the can becomes cold. When it's near full, the top half of the can warms back up to about room temperature. It only takes about 20 seconds. Obviously, I could turn the tap off early. It's a bit hard to gauge the time when you're doing this. Well, that was bad. I failed to turn off the tap completely. Let's not make that mistake again. The canister filled up to 178 grams gross weight. I'm writing these amounts on the bottom of the can so later I can check for any leakage. I filled up about 10 cans. Here's a look at the gas bottle I'm using. This one's an eight and a half kilogram swap and go, supplied by L Gas in Australia. A popular way to get a refill on the weekend is at a petrol station. The bottle itself is made in Thailand. This one's about two years old. I can't remember if it's five or ten years before it's expiry. People often exchange them for the date for another swap and go rather than buy a new bottle. Here's the refilled canisters with their gross weight written on the bottom. I'll leave most of these untouched in the shed and I'll check their weight in a week or so. Now let's test one out. With a bit of fiddling about, it does latch on completely but it still doesn't ignite. Please excuse the camera work, I only have two arms. It doesn't ignite with a bit of help either, so absolutely no gas is coming out. It's got a safety thing. I just noticed the safety mechanism. I completely overlooked it in my previous video. I pushed it down. Here I'm trying a butane cartridge and it works as normal. Next I tried a canister I refilled. I managed to get it to lock down and press the red button all the way down and stay there. Unbelievably it turned on. This is a butane cartridge filled with room temperature propane. Here's a closer look at that lever. Let's call this the new type Kent Master Stove.
Now for the frozen cartridge test. It's been in the freezer for about two hours. Straight up it worked just as normal. I tested it three hours later and it was still cold enough to work properly. Now for my older retired gas cooker. We'll call this the old type. It's a bit worse for wear, but it should be enough to demonstrate the difference between it and the new type. Note the lack of the red button. Again, I'm testing it with a propane filled cartridge. As expected, I've got trouble making it latch, and when it does, it still doesn't ignite. Next, we jam a bit of wood in there. And there we go, it works. Okay, let's try the wood method in the new type cooker. It's in. The lever's in the standard position. does not work. One last test with the lever method. Sorry about the camera again. I've got it locked in with the red lever pushed all the way down and there it is. It's been nine days with a maximum ambient temperature of about 25 degrees and the stored canisters have not leaked down yet. Previously I had stored canisters leak their contents but I'm not able to prove it so I'll run that test again. I'll keep the canisters for a while longer over the coming summer. If anything changes I'll make sure to add it to the description. So here is our final results for both Camp Master gas cookers running propane filled butane canisters. The old type works with a frozen canister as well as a wooden block jamming it in place. The new type works with a frozen canister as well as the lever method I demonstrated. Well that's it for this video, I hope it answered some questions and was educational. If you want to see more of this, please like and subscribe. As always, if you have any questions or constructive criticism, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.